Okay, guys, I know, I know your dinner is waiting for you, for you, but bear with me. I'll try to make this interesting to you. So, um, uh, what I will present is not only what I have been involved in, is the effort of a, a, of a big group of colleagues and friends all over the world. And um, I also will try to look at you to make sure the ones that are here stay with me. So stay tuned, look at me, I will look at you, and you will see that you will enjoy it. So I, I will focus my presentation on four key points uh, that we have been struggling and, and also engaged in within our, what we so far call our lively uh, li uh, urban futures uh, 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 initiative or platform. We still don't know whether it will be a platform, an initiative, a network of networks, and we don't know because we are really engaging with different communities and, and that's what uh, it takes to really listen to them. So the four questions I want to address and, uh, are why do we need to focus on urban issues? How is it that we are designing our approach to this issue? Who is participating? Who are we engaging with? And what is what so far we think we will deliver? And if I were to present this next year, I swear to God, the, the, what I will be presenting will be different because we are exactly in the process of, of engaging in, in this. So let me now move to the next one. So wh why urbanization and why urban areas? We distinguish between urbanization as a process that entails, and I will refer to that later on, demographic changes, technological changes, changes in governance, changes in lifestyles. So why are we focusing on urbanization and on urban areas as what we could call the most socioecological of all systems on earth? Well, why? Because urbanization and urban areas are at the heart of many of the processes and challenges described by the Future Earth Initiative. And this is an example of work uh, we did at NCAR where we uh, built a cluster of uh, uh, countries, 72 countries, I need to look at you, it's not there, 72 countries, we use uh, drivers of emissions such as GDP, population, and urban population, and we cluster countries, and you see um, there the hubs, we call the hubs, are the greens uh, on the top right of the screen. And on the other, uh, uh, the, the bottom left, you have the half nodes. So what is interesting here is that if, even if you use a, a CO2 per capita or total CO2 emissions, uh, per country, you see a correlation between urbanization and CO2 emissions. The more urbanized the country, the more, uh, 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 the more uh, industrialized the country, the higher its emissions. This even though we also col col uh, corroborated, we also found that there is, a, that the Kostnet score takes place, meaning this super green countries have been able to reduce the amount of emissions they produce per unit of production. So this is one reason, but there are many other reasons. Um, I mean, urban areas and urbanization are also at the heart of many of the, of, of many of the processes we are experiencing with the water cycle, with biodiversity, with the carbon cycle with many of the key elements of our Earth that we are changing at un unprecedented ways. So, why also urban areas and urbanization? And this is something we did for UN Habitat for a re report they published in 2011. And what we did was to use a, a, an index of hard, hazard risk and uh, we just build a cumulative score based on the risk of being exposed to cyclones, flooding, landslides, and drought. The more you go to the red areas, the higher the risk. We then just overlay those data with the location of cities of one million and more inhabitants. And two findings are key here. Oh, sorry, I'm not moving that, sorry. I need to be careful because, okay, 
two, two, two findings are, are, are of relevance here. First, risks have an urban face. The second key finding is that cities from the south, cities from the uh, middle and low income countries are at higher risk. Uh, I, I cannot share with you the data, but we also have data showing that many of the studies on risk and vulnerability focus on Europe and uh, the US. But that said, uh, cities are also sources of innovations and experiments. It is there where we have universities. It is there where we have many of the changes that might uh, uh, offer prospects for moving our system away from, our, uh, from uh, this unsustainable uh, path. But for us to move there, we need to start by changing the way we do science. And within our urban, I mean, just now it is the Urbanization and Global Environmental Change Group, but we want to call it, well, we have many titles, right? Uh, we have Future Urban Earth, we have a healthy urban futures. I mean, we have many titles, so we will decide on that. But something we are convinced of as a group is that the way to affect change is to start by yourself, is to start by changing the way in which you do science. And we are engaging in that. We really want to move away from the traditional way of doing science whereby we had at the global level these core projects. Uje was one of those core projects where we were a bunch, I mean, I was not part of it, but I mean, we were a bunch of social scientists that more or less care and, and wanted to engage with different communities, but were not so able, able to do that. The same can be said of other communities within this global environmental change community. We could say, and I, I was part of the Global Carbon Project, it, was, it is a bunch of excellent physical scientists that are, I mean, need to go beyond their, their boundary and their, their, their comfort zone to really engage not only in quantifying carbon, but also in understanding drivers of change. And humans are key drivers of change. So what we want to do, and you see it in this beautiful uh, 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 slide that Thomas uh, did, uh, we want to, to, be, to move away from this idea of core projects, this is the how, right, to uh, develop a platform, a, a, a network of networks, uh, that is flexible, that is open to what is emerging within different communities of practice and different regions of the world, and that is also able to focus on flagship activities and to engage in a conversation with different levels of uh, um, thinking of different ways of knowing different communities of practice. So, uh, and this is the way in, uh, we, we want to represent that. We want to not only have a, a, the typical approach we used to have whereby it was ASU, which is Arizona State University, the hub of the urbanization project. We want to have a hub in a North America, another in Latin America, there is some conversations about having two or three in Africa, uh, Asia, uh, many countries, I mean, at least three countries are interested. East Europe is not yet there. We, we need to see how we do it. And this sounds beautiful, but a key challenge we are faced with is where do we get the money to do it, right? So, I mean, it's beautiful, it's dreamy, it's it's catching our eyes, and, uh, but it's, it's challenging. So we also have uh, created a small transitions uh, team, uh, and we are in the process of, um, of a, a, a creating a transitions team. And some of the activities we have been involved in are a, a combination of synthesis efforts whereby we take stock and we say, where are we now? What is what we have achieved? And what is what we need to do? 
So we have already a couple of synthesis efforts with some uh, products. We also have been holding scoping workshops and meetings. We had one in February of 2014 in London. I will refer to a survey we have been uh, sharing with many uh, um, representatives of these urban communities because we really want to, to get a sense of what is what they want and how can we better engage with them. Uh, we held our uh, synthesis conference in Taipei in November. And uh, we are in the process, as I told you, of establishing a, a, a transitions team. And we are working hard to not only have representation from physical, social scientists, and the humanities, but also of engineers who, who are key uh, designers of the cities of the present and of the future. And we intend to hold a, a, another scoping workshop in Boulder uh, at Encar. I'm very happy to hold it. So whoever wants to participate can go there. Uh, um, and again, our goal is to, to, to take stock, to pay, uh, to follow, care, follow up carefully what Future Earth is doing, to, to learn from them, to also challenge them to learn from the communities we are working with, to combine what we call top-down with bottom-up approaches. Uh, who is, I mean, that's the, the, the next question, who is involved in our current efforts? I mean, I could say that we have three, uh, there are many ways to, to, to classify these communities. We have global, uh, supranational and uh, national um, urban networks, such as the UCCRN uh, uh, that has a, a set of cities and networks and stakeholders all over the world. Uh, APN and uh, ACCRN are communities that are more focused on Asia. GCP has an urban idea that is still trying to crystallize. We had a conversation with them and they want to, to engage with us with a focus on um, um, carbon, urban carbon issues, and we have existing communities. Uh, uh, we also want to make sure that we engage with decision makers, with uh, city players, and here is uh, where I have this other list. I, I won't read it, but uh, just examples. ICLE is a global community um, network NGO that has a lot of presence in many, in many cities all over the world. Another example is the 100 uh, uh, Cities Resili uh, Resilience Alliance of uh, um, the Rockefeller, and we are engaging in conversations with them. The process is taking longer than we hope, and we want uh, to, uh, for it to be, but we know that this is the way things are. And okay, let me really uh, refer to my last uh, question. So what is what we so far have in mind, where is where we see us moving in terms of products, in terms of next steps? So uh, in London, we uh, drafted together our mission. What we want to do is to champion science that supports but also challenges action. Uh, we want to also do it by reflecting the centrality of the urban and of urbanization in uh, transforming our current pathways uh, uh, to sustainable development. Um, so what, uh, what can I tell you also about the what? Uh, based on our online, I mean, what we did with our survey, which has been online, but we also have asked participants in our meetings to answer it. We, we, we uh, drafted five questions that in somehow follow what you guys did. I mean, the, we, we are really following your, the future of process, right? So the questions are, what are for our uh, stakeholders and our communities of practice and our colleagues, the key urban research and policy questions we should focus on? What are the needs for uh, future urban re research? Who are and could be our partners? Uh, what other critical components of research and of co-produced science we need to focus on that we have not considered so far? And I, I'm, I'm really excited to see that we are really getting many good and many great ideas. I just 
couldn't be able to bring them all. I mean, but I will share with you some, uh, some questions we have been able to articulate based on that input. And of course, how can local and regional science and policy communities be best involved? And here, a key, a key challenge is not only given by the fact that um, there is no money, and particularly Africa, Latin America, and some er uh, uh, South Asia do not have the resources that the US and, 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 um, and Europe have, but it is also true that, that the, 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 the way they do science is very rich, but it's not the way uh, uh, other communities do science. So we need to also be able to, to capture that energy and to do it in a meaningful way. So um, some examples just uh, to, to close of, of questions. We reframe and rephrase the idea of the dynamic planet, which is the dynamic urbanizing planning. And three key questions we care about are, how do urbanization and cities drive the changes that we are experiencing globally? And how do urbanization and urban areas vary across scale, place, and time? Uh, something uh, uh, we have been working a lot on because whether you believe it or not, if there is something we don't know, is that. I mean, we talk so much about urbanization, we don't agree about what urban is, for instance. What are key risks and tipping points? Um, now, as uh, for the uh, big theme of global urban development, we have two questions so far that I, we think capture what we have been discussing with our community. One is how those global environmental change affect urban populations, livelihoods, economic activities, and infrastructures. Infrastructures are the material stuff that keeps cities together, and it's a, are a material stuff that we have under, understudied um, within the community. And how vulnerable or adaptable are all these to the changes underway? Uh, as for uh, or, and we call it urban transformations. And I know, I mean, if rural people come, they will say everything is rural or everything is governance, but that's the way it is. And we just want to engage with you guys, but also with our other communities. So two key questions so far. What are the limits, barriers, and opportunities to transition to a more sustainable and resilient urban world? What lifestyles, ethics, and approaches to sustainable economic successful and livable cities are compatible with a transition to global sustainability? It's not a trivial question, by the way. Um, what products we have so far? We have already a special issue on urban carbon. What we did was to bring uh, three uh, communities, engineers and industrial ecologists, physical scientists and social scientists to bear on the, que the question of urban carbon. Um, and it's interesting, we talk so much about, oh, we need to come together, but let me tell you something. The mental models of the ones participating at the workshop that resulted in, do, in that uh, special issue are so different. Just, uh, just to give you an example, for engineers, carbon is an input. It can also be an output. For social scientists, it's a natural resource. For physical scientists, it's a flux, a flow, and also a pool. I mean, we are talking about three different approaches, and I could go ad nauseum, but I can tell you, we have different mental models, and we need to discuss them and to engage in that conversation for us to understand each other and to understand other communities. Um, Based on that, uh, uh, is that we want to develop this book that Thomas Elmquist is leading on what is, the, what is urban. Because we are aware that there are many answers to that question. And last but not least, I mean, there are many other activities we are involved in, but I, I, I just wanted to highlight some of them. Uh, we want to uh, organize a session within this, uh, our common future uh, under climate change a um, big uh, thing, and I finish on time. So, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if you are still willing to.
Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you for your patience. I know that being the last is terrible, but I saw your faces. I saw that you engaged, and that's what I wanted to do, to engage with you. Thank you very much.